How many brought a Bible? Oh, oh, oh man. Uh, Minister Aaron Riley said this is still the best resource right here. This is the best tool that you'll ever have. Say this with me. I am. Go ahead, DC. Say, I am everything this Bible says I am. I have everything this Bible says I have. I can do, but I'll let somebody else do. I can do everything this Bible says I can do. Today, I'm going to let this word become life in my life. In Jesus' name. Just so you know, I'm pulling out my timer, which doesn't mean a lot many times, but at least it looks good uh, when it... Uh, okay, now this time I'm going to shut the alarm off. How many was here at Perrine? Yes. That was a wild when that thing went off, huh? <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'm not telling you how much I'm putting on this timer. Just telling you I'm putting. <laughs> Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5. I've got good news for you today. Matthew chapter 5 and, um, well, you know, he's talking to the multitude. He's talking about blessed, 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 blessed. How many would like to be blessed, 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 blessed? So here's all the blessed are you, and blessed are you, and blessed are you, and blessed are you, and blessed are you. We get to verse 13 and it says, you are the salt of the earth. Salt keeps things fresh. Salt keeps things from putrefying. Salt keep and it brings out flavor. You are the salt. So God wants to shake you on the world. Are you with me? Because otherwise the world is going to rot without some salt. Verse 14 says, you are the light of the world. Why? Because the world is in darkness. You are the light. They're not going to see anything unless you shine. You see, if, if I don't tell some people the truth, they will never know the truth. So I've got one person in the sanctuary that appreciates me telling them the truth. So it's good enough for me. I'm looking for seven more to get on the ark. You know what I mean? <laughs> but if you take now that same heart, do you understand the world is going to die and go to hell if they don't know the truth? We must shine the light. Are you with me? It's just like you need to shine the light that Jesus did not come out of an egg or from a bunny rabbit. I mean, you just, I, I tell people, just Google it. Don't believe me. I mean, just Google it for heaven's sakes. Google will even tell you that. You Google everything else. Just Google, Google this star, Google Easter. You'll know it's a pagan God. Happy pagan God. Google that. You Google everything else. Well, you know, Bishop's just preaching that law stuff. Yeah. What are you preaching? Fantasy. Fairy tale. Okay. Once upon a time. Matthew, let your light shine. How many is going to let your light shine? Verse 17, this needs to be underlined in your Bible. You need to stick a piece of paper there or whatever so that you can turn to this when you're talking to people. Jesus said, after all the bless, bless, blessed, and you're the salt and you're the light, he said, now, think not. Don't even think this. Don't let somebody tell you this and start thinking about it. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. Now, how many has heard Jesus came to do away with the law? Okay, somebody said that. 
Somebody started thinking that, somebody started believing that, and about 33,000 denominations believe that. Denominations include many churches. Many churches include many people. That means an amazing amount of people believe that Jesus did away with the law. Well, Paul said that, or my pastor said that, or these 10,000 books in the Bible bookstore said that. Just so you know, right here, and in my Bible, I think it's in yours. How many, how many has that in yours? Uh, notice red print. Red print kind of denotes that actually Jesus Christ, the Son of God, actually said this personally himself. So a lot of people say, Jesus did away with the law. Why don't we just ask him? I mean, is that not sensible? He said, don't even think that I came to do away with the law and the prophets. Now, here's, here's the problem, people. Read the rest of this verse. I've not come to destroy, but to fulfill. So they say fulfill means complete, finish. If they say, well, he, he didn't really come to do away with the law, but he came to complete it because he completed it, I don't have to. If he completed it, well, then I don't have to. He did the law, so I don't have to. All right, here we go. What does it mean to abolish something, do away with? What does it mean to fulfill something? We have two words here. Jesus said, I didn't come to do one, I came to do the other. He cannot do both. He's not doing both. He's doing one or the other. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. All right. So take note that they cannot, the word destroy and fulfill cannot mean the same thing. If he's saying I came to not do this, but I came to do this, these two words cannot possibly be the same thing. I'm repeating this about three times because I, my wife always said I hear the third time. So I'm going after the third time. I didn't come to destroy. I came to fulfill. These two words cannot mean the same thing. They have to mean something different. So my message today is abolish or fulfill. It has to be one or the other. Cannot be both. Now, however, church leaders, they basically say that these two words are the same. I didn't come to do away with, but I came to do away with. I, did, I mean, I didn't come to put a stop to this, but I came to finish it so it stops. Are you with me? I mean, either way, they try to come at it. Okay, I know he didn't come to do away with it, but actually he did away with it because he completed it and it's over with. I completed it. When something's complete, it's, it's complete. Yes? Okay, it can't mean that, though. It can't mean that. So what does it mean to abolish something? We just go to the dictionary. It means to do away with, to put an end to. Okay, so th we, here we go. We've got the word destroy. Jesus said, I did not come to do away with right, right. or put an end to. Right. So in other words, the dictionary right there, all you have to do is look it up in the dictionary. The dictionary says if you do away with it, it means the same as put an end to it or complete it. The definition alone says these two words cannot possibly mean the same thing. And yet we're told by church leaders that fulfill does mean the same thing. Are you okay? What does the word fulfill mean? If I say fulfill. fulfill. All right, Jesus said, I did not come to do away with or put an end to. The law and the prophets. I hear all the time, well, the prophets have passed away. The apostles, the prophets passed away. No, Jesus said, I didn't come to do away with that. 
well, the law has passed away. It's not relevant. It's just for the Jews. No. Jesus himself said, no, I did not come to do that. All right, so then what did he come to do? That would be necessary for us to understand what he did come to do. Okay, how, how many has got it settled in your heart? Okay, he did not come to do away with the law. Well, 33,000 denominations can't be wrong. One verse tells me they're wrong. They can't all be right. Or there wouldn't be 33,000 different ones for crying out loud. Everybody thinks they're right in their own eyes. I have to go back and see what he says. Okay, so I did not come to do away or destroy the law, but I came to fulfill it. The word fulfill, are you ready? If we, if, see, here's our problem. Fulfill, what's that mean? English. Remember we talked about law. Then we talked about nomos, and we talked about Torah. Depends on how you hear the word is good or bad. Last week I talked about good law, bad law. Well, if we hear definition in English, law, we, we think bad. We think cramp in my style. We, we, we think, I don't, I don't want to do that. But if we go back to Torah, it means instructions and wisdom to hit the mark. Goodness sakes, this is a way to stay alive in this planet. Here's protection, guidance, instructions. Jesus said, I didn't come to do away with instructions for life. I, di I didn't come to do away with the instructions on how you can hit the mark. That would be ridiculous. But I came to do what? Fulfill. The word fulfill comes from a Greek word. Are you ready? P-L-E-R-O-O. -O. Paleru. This is what it means to verify. To fully preach. To completely assure. To make full proof of. To demonstrate. Jesus said, I didn't come to do away with the law. I came to give you an exact demonstration of what it's like yeah. of one to follow it. I came to assure you that if a person who does the law, they can walk on water, heal the sick, raise the dead. I came, to, I came to fully preach it because the Pharisees haven't been fully preaching it. You've heard a watered down, man-made, ridiculous, stupid man-made law stuff. You've never seen a good demonstration of it before. What you've seen, you would like it to be done away with. What Jesus did come to do away with was the man-made laws. Yeah. You can't walk farther than this on, on, on the Sabbath. You, you, you have to wash here. You have to do this. You can't blow your nose on the Sabbath. <laughs> My God, we got snot running down for two days, you know? Man-made laws. I'm not just saying. Jesus said, you've got so many stupid laws, you're keeping people from the law of God. These man-made laws that you got, you know, we got to color eggs and, you know, we got to have, you know, we got to kill a ham and eat pig and we've got to not, not, we, we got to weep for Tammuz for 40 days all in the name of stupidity. Are you with me? And people are saying, well, I'm really hungry. I had to, I had to give up chewing gum for Lent. <laughs> These man-made laws are stupid. I got to cut a good, beautiful tree down and kill it. Drag it into my house and try to make it pretty. Set up a phallic symbol and hang some testicles on it and get your kids to bow down and worship it. No, no, I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. People can't get to God because of all this stupidity. A man from the North Pole is going to slide down your chimney and bring gifts to you. We can't get to God because we can't get past a big fat man in a red suit. Oh, I'm back to being hard again. Let me see. Jesus said, I didn't come to do away with the thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Do you understand? It's a false witness to say somebody rides in a sleigh in the air with reindeer. 
That's a false witness. It's a false witness that a bunny rabbit lays eggs. And we're going to evangelize our children by coloring them in the blood of sacrifice. That's a false witness. Jesus said, I didn't come to do away with the instructions for life. I came to demonstrate it. Do you know how Jesus demonstrated it? You snake, you viper, you hypocrite. Do you know how John demonstrated it? You snakes, you vipers, you hypocrites. Who's warned you to flee from the wrath of God? Wow. Oh, we don't have preachers like that today. We got your best life now. <laughs> Bestseller. Oh, I don't know. I don't judge. Yeah, have you, do you judge a diaper? You can't judge anything because you don't know the law to judge it by. Jesus said, I didn't come to do away with the law. Right. Now, the Antichrist did. Yep. Right. He is called the lawless one right. who reigns in 30,000 denominations. The lawless one. Yeah. Why? Because they say he did away with it. The same lawless one's been doing away with it since the garden. Yep. The lawless one stepped into the garden into the snake and told Eve, you don't have to do the law. All you have to do is whatever you want to do. God just keeping it from you. You can be a God unto yourself. Well, knock yourself out. Now, here's the gospel today. You can be a gay homosexual, lesbian, murder, rapist, lawless person, but go ahead and eat of the tree of life. As soon as you do, you'll be forever in that state. So we got 30,000 denominations that say you're saved by grace, you filthy pig. And all you don't have to repent because after all, we're saved by grace. Jesus did away with the law, so he don't judge anybody. Well, don't judge me. Oh, I will judge you. Yeah. I'll judge you whether you're a sheep, a goat, or wolf. I'll, I'll judge you whether you're an idiot or wise. No, I can judge. I'm just sorry the world is so stupid they can't. Yeah. Right. Can you judge a politician? Oh. Christians can't. Right. Oh, I vote for so-and-so. I vote for so-and-so. People say, who are you voting for? Here's my answer. Left wing, right wing, same bird. I don't care which wing you vote for. They're going to flop towards one world government because that's what they are. Well, he said a few Christian things. God, and you can't figure that out? You can't judge that? Oh, he said a few Christian phrases. Good for you. Did you hear him cuss over here? Yeah. <laughs> Who are you voting for? Well, let me see. A lesbian or a womanizer? A world dictator or a lesbian? Kill anybody that gets in her way. Which one are you going to vote for? I'm not. Well, yes, but all the pastors out there, you've got to vote. Why? I read the end of the book. You just go ahead and keep believing your vote matters. Well, our vote matters. Sure, you just keep believing that. I got a bridge to sell you, too. Do you know how people get in office? The game's already played. It's already played. They just give you a little opportunity to think you're a part of it. It's just entertainment for two years. You want to know the truth? Read this book. Read this book. You know what's going to happen? Read the book. Get the end time series. 
There will be a harlot church. There will be a beast. There will be so many kingdoms. And there will be the lawless man that will come. That is what you need to be aware of. Not trying to change democracy or Republican. See, let me see. Democracy or Republican. Hmm. Or a third party ticket. Hmm. No. I see theocracy in here. God rules. And that's the kingdom you need to be in. Because when all this stuff comes down, your little social security number is not going to save you. You've got to be massively kidding me. I was talking to the sound tech back there. <laughs> Here's the mark of the beast. Our forehead and our forehand. <laughs> and everybody in the world walks around with the mark in their hand and the mark in their forehead. And now we pay with the mark by swiping our phone. My wife just got the mark yesterday. She got a $30 gift card for implanting the mark of the beast in her forehead and her hand. Well, I thought it was going to be a tattoo, 666, on my forehead. Oh, my God. Who told you that one? Who told you that one? No, as soon as it's digital world, as soon as it's digital finances, and how many lives in that already? All they have to do is shut a little switch off. And you won't be able to buy or sell, make a phone call, or go to the bathroom for crying out loud. Because there it is right there, friends. Now, if you don't know the God that sends ravens to feed you, if you don't know the God that will take you through a Red Sea, if you don't know the God that uh, will send manna from heaven, if you don't know the God that will send quail, then, then you're in deep trouble because that thing shuts off. Your life just ended. I don't care if it's a Republican phone or a Democrat phone. I don't care if it's a United States of America or Iran or Iraq or India or Russia. Come on, friends. There is one God. Hear, O Israel. There is one God. And don't have any other gods before him. And stop committing adultery. Stop stealing. Stop bearing false witness. Honor the Name of the Lord. Don't run around in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Slap yourself. He's not your shopping mall God. And quit coveting someone else's countertops. I have to preach to everybody. See, if you can't preach it to your own spouse, if you can't preach it to your own family, God's not going to trust you to preach it anywhere else. I got it. I got it. Okay, she's got it. Praise God. <laughs> Jesus said, I didn't come to do away with the law and the prophets. You've got to be massively kidding me. That is the problem with the world today. They have no law. They have no prophets. They stone the prophets. The ones that point and tell people the truth. They don't like them. They like the prophets to say, you're blessed, you're blessed, you're blessed, you're blessed, you're blessed. Thousand dollar offering blessing prophets. Psychic hotline prophets. It's nuts. Jesus said, I didn't come to do away with it. If ever you need the law, if ever you need the truth and grace, in a package that you can see it, where it's demonstrated so that it's like, oh, I get it. You're blessed. Why? Oh, you're obedient? What a concept. You mean you have to obey God to be blessed by him? My pastor told me I don't have to obey him to be blessed. And he's a liar. 
He's a liar and he's a thief. He's not a true shepherd. He is a hireling. There's masses of amounts of them. Now, Matthew 3.15, just a few verses here. Let it be so now. Jesus is coming to John the Baptist. Everybody say John the Baptist. And John says, oh man, I, I, I can't baptize you. I need to be baptized of you. And this is what Jesus said. Let it be so now. It is proper for us to do this to fulfill all righteousness. Same word, plural. According to church leaders, this would mean I have come to do away with all righteousness. It fulfill means complete it, end it. That's the end of it. There's no more of it. Well, then Jesus says, as soon as you baptize me, John, I'm going to put an end to righteousness. Okay, how much sense does that mean? How many says, uh oh, not good on that one. The next thing that uh, Jesus states in verse 18 is not one jot or tittle, tittle will be removed until heaven and earth passes away. <clears throat> That's back to Matthew 5, 18. Uh, how many thinks the earth is still here? I mean, have you, have you checked that? Okay, Re he's referring to Revelation 21.5. He who was seated on the throne said, I'm making everything new. Then he said, write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. He said to me, it is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning of the end. To him who is thirsty, I will give to the drink without cause from the spring of water. So, all prophecy is going to be completed at the end of the tribulation and when there's a new heaven and a new earth. Yeah. All prophecy is not completed yet. Yeah. So Jesus said, I did not come to do away with the law and the prophets or the prophecies. In fact, not one prophecy will be done away with. Not one prophecy will not be fulfilled until heaven and earth passes away. It, it, there's some prophecies that still have to take place. Amen. Now, people are all the time looking at the news and say, well, prophecy is being fulfilled. Is that not true? Yeah. Well, if Jesus did away with it 2,000 years ago, what are, you, what, are you, what are you looking for prophecy to be fulfilled for then? Yeah. See, you're contradicting yourself. The next thing Jesus says then, is that heaven and earth is going to be the line where these things are going to change. So Jesus said, I didn't come to do away with it because the time hasn't come yet. Are you with me? Now, there was a prophecy about Pentecost. Joel prophesied about Pentecost. Is that correct? He said, uh, upon my sons and daughters, I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Yes? That was prophecy. Everybody say prophecy. Prophecy. If Jesus did away with it, whoops, Pentecost is after the crucifixion. Passover is after, or excuse me, Passover is before. So if Jesus came to do away with the law and the prophets, then Pentecost could not have possibly happened. So that's a prophecy after Jesus came. He didn't come to do away with it. Because it was still happening. To Peter says, nevertheless, we, according to his promises, look for a new heaven and a new earth. Obviously, Peter was still looking for it. How many still looking for a new heaven and a new earth? Well, then the law and the prophets are still in effect until that takes place. Yeah. Now, just a few places where palero is used. Fulfill. Everybody say Fulfill. Romans 15, 13, may the God of all hope fill you with all joy and peace. Okay, let me see. If fulfill means to complete and bring an end to, then that means your joy and your peace has ended. I, are you hearing what I'm saying? 
Because this is the same word. I did not come to do away with. I came to what? Fulfill. Well, if fulfill means do away with, well, then so far he's done away with your righteousness. Now he's doing away with your joy and peace. And obviously, all of those people that preach this, you see that's exactly what has been done away with. Isn't that amazing? Colossians 1.25, I have become its servant by the commission of God, gave me to present to you the word of God in its palero. Okay, well, that means now. <laughs> Paul just did away with the word of God. <laughs> I mean, if this word means put an end to. So we put it into righteousness. We put an end to what? Joy and peace. Now we're putting an end to the word of God. Absolutely. Because we, we don't even do anything with this book anymore. We, we buy your best life now books. We buy books from this woman that's always complaining and sad about everything and all women think she's wonderful. Now, we, we don't read the Bible anymore. We read books by unrighteous, no joy and peace, and no word. My. You doing okay? Let's, let's try one more. James 2.23. And the scripture was fulfilled. <laughs> okay. So the scripture now is now done away with. Do you understand that possibly cannot mean that? All right. So then your righteousness is now fully demonstrated. Your joy and peace is now finally fully demonstrated. The word of God is finally now fully demonstrated. The scriptures are now fully preached and demonstrated. Now which one makes more sense to you? I did not come to do away with the law and prophets. I came to demonstrate it, fully preach it, give you a demonstration of it and bring it into completion into your life. And make it available to you. Are we okay? All right. Now, I'm not saved by the law. I have to keep saying that because everybody says, well, you're preaching law. No, I preach grace. But I also preach the truth. And the truth is law or instructions of God or the righteousness of God or the, in, the, the way to follow God. This is the way you follow God. You don't follow God by pagan worship. You follow God the way he said, follow him. Psalms 19.7, another verse you need to make sure you have marked in your Bible. Say, I will mark this in my Bible. I didn't, I didn't last week, but I will mark it in my Bible this week. Psalms 19.7, right here in front of God and everybody. The law of the Lord is perfect. Converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether, and it's more to be desired than gold. Jesus said, I didn't come to do away with that which is more desired to have than gold. I didn't come to do away with something that's perfect. I didn't come to do away with something that converts the soul. Surely I'm not going to come to do away with something that makes wise, makes people wise. Yes? I'm not going to do, something, do away with something that rejoices the heart or that's true and righteous altogether. I'm not going to come to do away with that. Heavens, I've come to bring it to light so that you can see all of these benefits that are available to you. That's why I fully preached it. That's why I put my finger on all the falsities that prevent you from seeing the truth. The law is perfect. How can you improve on perfect? How can you make perfect better? Why would you want to do away with perfect? 
Now, ending with Matthew 5 again. Let's read it through one more time. Are you okay? Yeah. Homey says, yep. Mr. James was right. He is a hard old man. <laughs> Matthew 5, 17. Here it is. Think not that I've come to destroy. Lessen. Yeah. Lighten up. Water down. Do away with the law. Don't even think that I came to do that. This is what I have come to do. I've come to fully preach it, fully demonstrate it. Make it so that you can see it. The word became flesh and we were able to see a demonstration of it. That's what I came to do. I don't know about you, but that's what I come to do. It's what I come to do every week is to help you see the word so that that word can become life in your life. That's my life. That's my mission. Now, he goes on to say, But verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass away, not one verse. Listen to me. He did away with the old covenant. The old covenant is for Jews. N not true. Not one verse. Not one jot. Not one dotting of the I, crossing of the T. This is the word of God. Are you with me? You do it injustice when you say Old and New Testament. It's not true. It's the Word of God. It's the Torah. It's the prophets. It's the writings. It's the Gospels. It's the epistles. It is the Word. God's Word never changes. What He said in the New Testament is the same thing that was said in the Old Testament. It's just us Gentiles don't understand Hebrew. Because most of us don't understand English. Now, verse 19, okay, uh, verse 18. Till heaven and earth pass away, not one jot or tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be polero. Till all be fully preached and demonstrated and lived out and verified among people. Now, there's another scripture that says, you know, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. This gospel of the kingdom will, will be what? Fully preached in all the world. Yes, Jesus said, I didn't come to do away with the law. I'm looking for people that will be a part of my team that will fully preach this gospel. Yes, I need someone to help me fully preach it. Amen. And not only fully preach it, but live it as a yes. demonstration. Yes. All right, here's, here's verse 19. This is, I mean, just to show some people that our ambition preaches the law. Just show them this verse. Whosoever therefore shall break one of the least commandments, like, like what's that? Like stealing or false witness or, I mean, what's one of the least ones? Eating pig, eating bacon. Called one preacher, his first thing out of his mouth. I just got done finishing my bacon, lettuce, and tomato sandwich. Well, you pagan worshiping backslidden heifer. I got a verse for you. Matthew 5, 19. Whoever shall break one of these least commandments and then teach others to do so, he shall be called least in the kingdom. I don't know what least in the kingdom means, but it doesn't sound good. I mean, it doesn't sound good. I mean, I suppose it's good that it appears that you're still in the kingdom. But whosoever, here, underline this. Whosoever shall do and teach yes. the commandments. Do the commandments. Yes. Remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. Yes, sir. That means log on to BAMI.org at 8 p.m. on Friday evenings, uh, Eastern Standard Time, and listen to 30 minutes of the Torah, which was instructions to help you hit the mark. Yes. That's one of the ten. Do it. Just say, yes, sir, I will do that. You're a hard man, but I will do that. It's one of the top ten. Stop sleeping around. Bow your head and say, ooh, okay.
How do you know that? But whosoever shall do and what? Teach others. The same shall be called great in the kingdom. There's not many great preachers in the pulpit today, are there? I'm sorry, if your mega star preacher on TV is your favorite guy, if he's not preaching the commandments, God doesn't think he's great. You need to take him down from your little pedestal. Well, if he teaches against the commandments, he's not great. He's least. He doesn't even deserve to be in the pulpit. I said to people this weekend, I said, my, my Lord, if preachers can't count to three, they do not deserve to be in the ministry. If Jesus was crucified Friday afternoon and he's supposed to be in the grave three days and three nights, let me see, Friday afternoon, Saturday afternoon, one. Oh, before daylight, he rose. Okay, we got a day and a quarter. Okay, a day and a quarter is not three. Please learn how to count to three. If you can't count to three, why are you leading people? Stop the nonsense. Please let me get off this, this roller coaster religious church ride. Come out and be separate. Well, yeah, but families have an Easter dinner today, you know, and dear God, I just really have to go. Why? Why don't you obey God and not man? Why are you still bowing down to a pig and family instead of bowing down to the Almighty God? I heard the prophets in the house say today, God is looking to see which God you're worshiping today. Man. People who say they're Christians are still worshiping the wrong one. Which means they're lawless. Which means when the Antichrist comes, the lawless one, you'll be pleased to see him. You'll be pleased to see him. And it'll, it'll go well for you either three and a half or seven years. Are you with me? So if you're going to have your best life now, that'll be it. Because when seven years rolls around, the real God is coming. And you think, I'm hard. <laughs> I'm just a pop quiz. Do you understand? I'm just a pop quiz. I may gave a, give a little hard test to some of the ministers, but man, he's coming with the final exam. I'm just trying to get you ready for the test. I want you to pass it. Do you understand? Because I want to see you ruling and reigning for a thousand years. It's worth it. Well, Jesus said, don't eat, don't, gosh, please, don't even think that I came to do away with the law. Of course not. It'd be really like, ridiculous. I am the word. Right. Why would I do away with me? Right. Right. See, but unless you know that the word was in the beginning, the word was God, the word, are you with? And the word became flesh. If he came to do away with prophecy, the law, the instructions, Jesus would have said, I came to do away with me. Insane, isn't it? Absolutely insane. But people will believe that. They will believe a bunny lays eggs. They will believe that. They will believe that there's a man in the North Pole that can, that's fat and slide down the chimney. How many skinny people can't even get down the chimney? How many, how many people don't even want to go down a chimney smart enough not to even want to go down? Are you with me? Whew. People believe that and teach others that. Teach your family that. One granny I heard say one time, I just don't want the children to miss out. <sighs> okay. I hate for them to miss out on an experience with the devil. Yeah. I mean, goodness sakes, what a, what a terrible thing. What a terrible thing. Bypass all that. Okay. 
I'm done. Turn to somebody and say, thank God he is done. Help me, Jesus. <laughs> Did Jesus do away with the law? No. Did he come to fully demonstrate it? Is it good law or bad law? Oh, it's good law, isn't it? Amen. And he came to fulfill your righteousness. He came to fulfill the scriptures in your life. He came to fulfill all of these things and cause it to become life in your life. What an opportunity.